Welcome everyone, my name is Teacher Glenn. In this video lecture, we'll be talking about constructing frequency distribution table, histogram, and frequency polygon using Microsoft Excel. Let's start by defining these terms. A frequency distribution table is a chart that summarizes values and their frequency. It's a useful way to organize data if you have a list of numbers that represent the frequency of a certain outcome in a sample. In this example, the first column is the class interval. The numbers on the left are the lower limits and the numbers on the right are the upper limits. There are seven class interval or seven groups in this example and each group has five members. Class boundary is the true and upper limits of a class interval and to compute for a class boundary, simply take the midpoint or the average of the upper limit and the lower limit of the next class interval. Third column is the class mark. This is also the midpoint of a class interval or a class boundary. To compute for the class mark, we simply take the average of the lower limit and the upper limit. Fourth column is the frequency. Frequency is the number of occurrence of an observation in every classes or group. Next is histogram. Histogram is a diagram consisting of rectangles whose area is proportional to the frequency of a variable and whose width is equal to the class interval. So in this example, the horizontal axis is the class boundary and the vertical axis is the frequency. Notice that in histogram, there are no gaps between bars and the width of each histogram is always equal to the class size or the class interval width. Next term is the frequency polygon. A frequency polygon is a graph constructed by using lines to join the midpoints of each interval or bins. It can also be created from the histogram or by calculating the midpoints of the bins from the frequency distribution table. Like the histogram, frequency polygon is also constructed in the same manner but this time using lines. Now there are steps in constructing a frequency distribution table. What I'm going to present is simply an ideal type of constructing the FDT. So step one is to find the range. We simply take the difference of the highest and lowest score of the given set of data. Step two is to determine the class interval, small n. Take the square root of the number of observation. So simply that small n is equal to square root of n. Sometimes or mostly the result could be from 5 to 15 groups. Third step is to compute for the class size i. This is the members per group and to compute for that simply take the quotient of the range and the class interval n. Step 4 is to set up the class interval n. The lower limit of the first group is the lowest score. The upper limit would be equal to the lower limit plus the class size minus 1 if our row data is a whole number. The last group should contain the highest score. And step 5 is to tally the score and compute for the frequency, class mark, commutative frequency, or relative frequency. Let's take a look at example number 1. So in this example, the row score or the set of data is composed of 162 observation. Step one is to take the range where you need to locate or determine the highest score and the lowest score. And in Microsoft Excel, we'll be using formula max for looking for the highest score in this given set of data. So that would be equals. Let's look for max, M-A-X, and then highlight your set of data. Make sure that the set of data is completely highlighted, then click OK and we have a 44 as the highest score. Next is the lowest score. We'll make use of the formula min or minimum. That would be equals. Look for min and again highlight or set of data. Make sure that that's a total of 162 row score. Click OK and that would be 9. Now to take the range, simply subtract the highest score minus the lowest score. That would be 35. Now let's simply complete the value of capital N, that's 162, that is our row score. And to compute for the class interval, we now take the square root of 162, that would be equals, look for SQRT, and click 162, click OK, and you have 12.7. Step 3 is to take the class size, that's equals, the quotient of the range and the class interval, that's 35 divided by 12.7. In our formula, that would be equals S16 forward slash S17. Press enter and we have 2.75. Now we need to round this to the next add number, 
since our row score is a whole number or our set of data composes of all whole number we need to round this up to the next add number which is a whole number so 2.75 would become 3 now step 4 is to set up the frequency distribution table we start with the first group and that would be 9 as the lowest score or the lower limit and below the first group is the second group lower limit we compute that by pressing equals clicking the lower limit of the first group plus your class size 3 then press enter now we can simply drag the formula up to the last group that we are about to compose so we are complete with the lower limit of the class interval now we proceed to the upper limit this would be equals 9 plus 3 minus 1 that would be 11 this is correct because 12 comes after 11 now to compute for the upper limit of the next group or the second class interval we press equals click on the upper limit of the first group and then we now simply add 3 then we drag the formula and there you go we are complete with the class interval column to compute for the frequency we'll be using the formula count ifs so press equals look for count ifs that's count ifs with s and we'll need to input our criteria range 1 that would be our set of data or row score our criteria for the first class interval it should be from 9 to 11 so this should be greater than or equal to 9 now our criteria range 2 we use the same set of data making sure that we are able to take or input the correct cell in our criteria number two it should be less than or equal to 11 then click ok so notice that out of this 162 row data that number of frequency of the class interval from 9 to 11 is only one now we can copy the formula but before we do that we need to make sure that our criteria range one and our criteria range 2 are locked by putting a dollar sign before the number and the letters press enter then we can we can copy the formula notice that the result are all one because we need to update our range so this should be from 12 to 14 so changing 9 to 12 and 11 to 14 we do the same with the third group this should be from 15 to 17 so this should be 15 to 17. So we need to update every frequency of every class interval. Let me just post this to complete the rest. There you go. I was able to complete the frequency up to the last group by updating the range of our count ifs formula. So to compute the class mark, we simply take the average of the upper limit and the lower limit. That's equals. Click on average. Highlight your location of your data, or in 9 and 11 are highlighted, and X will only compute the numbers. Then we copy the formula, and there you go. Our class mark is completed. Now for the less than commutative frequency, we start with equals 1, then the next group equals 1 plus 3, and then we copy this formula indicating that our last value is 162 and to make sure that our frequency is complete if we take the sum of our frequency this should be 162 as well click OK there you go the total frequency is 162 then our relative frequency we simply take the quotient of the frequency and the total frequency so this is equals 1 divided by our total frequency is 162 this is in decimal if we click the icon for percentage it will turn to percentage and we can put it up to one decimal place copy the formula and take the sum of the relative frequency it should be 100%. There you go. It's correct. 100%.
So I am complete with the, the frequency distribution table. This is just one example of how you could construct your frequency distribution table. Normally, you only need class interval and the frequency. But in my discussion, I have presented your class mark, the less than cumulative frequency, and the relative frequency. Now we proceed to constructing histogram. And to do this, we'll be needing the class boundary. So I'll be placing the column for class boundary. And to take the class boundary for a whole number, we simply take the midpoint of the uh, upper limit and the lower limit of the next class interval. So for this value, upper limit, class boundary, notice that the midpoint of 11 and 12 is 11.5. So we simply add 0.5 to our upper limit. That would be 11.5. Again, this is the midpoint of the upper limit and the lower limit of the next class interval. So if we copy this formula, it follows for the whole upper limit of the class boundary. And for the lower limit, we subtract 0.5 from the lower limit of the class boundary or the class interval. And copy the formula. There you go. Put some color. So in our histogram, we click data tab and look for data analysis. If this is not yet present in your Microsoft Excel, just click on file. Click for options. Click for add-ins and go to manage. Click go and make sure that this first two are checked. So in my case, I won't be needing to redo it because you only do this once. So under data analysis, click data analysis, click histogram, click OK. Now we look for our input range. So let me clear this out. So we start with our input range. Our input range would be our set of data. Our bin range be our upper limit of the class boundary. And we look for our output range. I would like to have the output range positioned here. Again, let me repeat that. Our bin range would be the, the upper limit of the class boundary. And our output range, we choose this location. Before clicking OK, make sure that the chart output is checked and click OK. So it shows a new column of bin and frequency. Bin is taken from our upper limit of the class boundary and it automatically computes the frequency as well. This is another shortcut. Instead of using count ifs, you can also use this data analysis. So as you can see, the frequency is the same. There you go. And the histogram is already created, located somewhere in this page or in this sheet. So let me just drag it down. Now let me update this bin into the midpoint so that this horizontal axis will be updated as well and it will present the correct label. And since this is a histogram, we need to remove the gaps between the bars. So to do that, right click on the bar, click on Format Data Series, and no gap, 0%. Click Close, and there you go. So notice that this is our frequency, and this is our class mark. That's the bin, and this is now our histogram. Now we also compute for our frequency polygon. To create the frequency polygon, we, we can do the same procedure by clicking data analysis, click on histogram, and click OK. Our input range is already correct. Our bin range is also correct. That is our upper limit of the class boundary. And just simply select our output range. This would be, say, here. Click OK. And let's look for that histogram the new histogram created. Well, basically it's just the same. You can actually change this uh, bar into line. So to do that, right click and click on change series chart type and click on line. Click OK. And there you go. This is our frequency polygon. Let me update this. 
let me just update the pin as well this should be the class mark so the label of our frequency polygon will also be updated there you go and we can stretch this out a little longer so it will show our proper label on our frequency polygon so this is the result of frequency polygon this is just one shape that we could get from a frequency polygon this is actually a symmetrical polygon because in the middle it could actually mirror the left side or the right side now in our future discussion you may see different shape of frequency polygon again in my example i have the normal bell shape symmetrical and we'll be dealing with the other shape of frequency polygon in our next video lecture. That's it for now and thank you for watching.